um, have some food. So, uh, overpriced grape leaves wrapped rice. It's supposed to be able to, if I make it in a smiley face, it'll focus on the kind of good. Do some of that some Mediterranean style dishes that I've been putting on Instagram lately. These are those, they're not uh, kidney beans, if somebody thought they're Davina or Divina. Gigantus beans in a vinaigrette. And uh, just stuff like that. I, you know, make sure I get. Enough protein. I actually don't usually eat the corn and things like that. Um, wheat, I try to cut out. The genetics seem to be warped, and apparently, from what I was told, genetics themselves are. Uh, sorry. It's like eight sides. They disrupt the uh, neurological system, cause inflammation, immune system suppression, or immune suppression, and memory disturbances. Basically, it shuts off your consciousness. But I just wanted to say, you know, if you have, if one has, or if I have, as I do now, for now, food to eat, nourishment, a way, a place to secure myself and stay warm, and some form of communal unity, just what I worded it as before in my head, which is of course just community, then you have wealth. You have the wealth of, of life. Um, you have what you need to live. And a good book, or I think like I said on the ride, which I'm going to try and edit, audio edit, a lot of it's probably disturbed and uh, uh, disrupted or distorted, excuse me, disturbed, it's, it's angsty. Because um, I was on the bike riding masked up and with like a mic tucked in somewhere. And then I can use the earbud mic and it works just fine because the scarf and all that covers the wind block, which is the main issue with that. And it's pretty much fine to just go anyway right next to the cheek. But, um... But that's the wealth of life and enjoyment. I said I was reading, uh, or I was listening to the audiobook of Virtual Light by William Gibson, which is, it's a prophetic book. He's a visionary writer. That's what I said in the audio. And the information is from the projects. So it's like, you know, he got it from somewhere. He's an insider. Or is. Um, it's like in the 80s, and it's about all the tech that was is you know known about now but was present back then but wasn't released it still isn't fully released but people are like all right this is possible it's like why wouldn't it be people in the know and so you have the enjoyment of life right there emphasis really not emphasis on either of shelter food you know intellectual stimulation which is a form of entertainment as well, if you will, but combined. But still, something you can learn from. An art. A knowledge. And community. Belonging. Purpose. I think people seek purpose. I think I need to have a sense of purpose. And a sense of belonging or fulfillment something I can do to influence others so it's just, so I know I exist as a part of something larger an integral part where I can in a way excuse me you know I share myself with the world and learn from them and be shared with and reflected with and onto in response and exchange in that sense you know that's what we really want 
People will chase addictions, abuse, relation, abuse relationships, suffering, continuous uh, suffering, a cycle, all types of image, all types of self delusion, identity delusion. Um, that makes it worse. But in these times, I often do get reflective because I think of the less fortunate. And I try to do my part to help when I see people and things like that. And uh, you kind of usually have to give, obviously, like clothes or food or something like that because there's a rampant heroin, basically heroin epidemic, drug addiction epidemic, and it's either pills, heroin, and that's pretty much it. That's what it is. Um, and they're basically the same system ran by the same people if you want to think about it so the um pharmaceutical so the you know it's hard to help people that are down and out and the type of people you often might see in the streets or one often might see and a lot of times it's not because it'll be a family or <laughs> again a small family you know, like a parent-child, maybe. And that's like, uh, hidden in America. It's more prominent in other countries, but it's, it happens here. And there's not enough resources to secure everyone. So, you know, that's where it gets me. We're in this, we're in a war. We're in a genetic war. And what is basically being prodded in an attempt to turn it into a class war and um there's so much beauty in what's already here and half the world is moving so far ahead that the other half has a limited window of being able to keep up before they're no longer relevant and literally you know faced with the type of extinction that other species other racial groups, cultures have faced. And there's advanced technology watching the whole thing, saving people or uh, harassing people. It's a story into itself. But, um, yeah. I don't know. I just want to say things like this sometimes. It makes me think it makes me think about how we can help one another and uh, help overcome one another's suffering. There's always a way, there's always something you can do, and often communicating, befriending, acknowledging, offering advice or assistance or, and you know, to, to listen or something useful is all it takes because if we all had that in the foreground of our mind as if it were normal because people don't consider it normal yet it's reasonable to compete until we are all dying um, we wouldn't be in the problem we are collectively and that is the shame that y'all just be nice to each other it's like we wouldn't have wars planned in advance to entangle the population in problems that didn't exist so and uh, you know then then there's these other situations that you know that's happening because of a potentially larger problem or so on and so forth but I'm not gonna get into that so this is like another video get back to the regular regularly scheduled deprogramming maybe irregularly scheduled regularly unscheduled deprogramming and uh, probably start editing that and get into a post that I have that I'm finishing I already put one out and I've put a couple out recently that kind of just just began again um, yeah I want to see change um, I'm gonna put a link uh, Pac lives just did his own version of the 
Hmm. What is the game? It's a game that uh, it's full of uh, do X. Spell deuce X. D E U S E X. Uh, it's usually do X machina. Reduce X machina. Um, which is like, uh, I think, the hand of God. It's a literal, what is it, uh, like a me mechanism. I can't think of the word. Literal device, not a device. Eh. I think it's like a literary, I guess it's a literary device, where the solution is provided by some act of higher power or some coincidence or some kind of give away meaning, or in some cases it's kind of like, okay, that was like the, the quick way, easy way to end the story, to make, to wrap it up, and it's done, you know, immaculately, it's like, it makes you believe in a higher force, because there's some element of that that you can relate to your own lives, or your own life, and uh, you kind of resonate with and identify with the, the character of the story, the overcoming. But the video game is full of Either disinfo or info, uh, disclosure, soft disclosure, however when you look at it, however you want to look at it. Um, but I'm going to post the other one. I'll probably post both of them because they're both interesting and they're both... I pretty much explain some things. Remember, you get one way and then it's the reverse of that which is true. And sometimes the antithesis of both of those will be what is actually. So it's like three layers of recursive or reflexive disinformation and information layered. And um, for instance, a lot of things that they're like, oh, they're taking over, they're doing this, they're going to force people to do this. It's like, well, that's because that's the good version and they're trying to steer you away from that, make you afraid of it. And it's like, why do you think they're putting that out everywhere if video games are than the other? And it's like, oh, it's really helpful to do, you know, another way or something like that. Anyway. That's that. I'll probably post that. And then, um, yeah, get back to the other post and editing. The stream of consciousness video, that will be the last stroll-like video through my mind. Um, although it's riddled with, uh, or it's like laced with information and, 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 and discussion on these topics, such as the connection of the observance of time as the observance of seasons as the observance of holidays as the original observance of ancient pagan goddesses and rituals as consciousness altering methods and um that's why the holidays people say they're actually pagan rituals and the days of the week and the names of the months it's all it, it all comes from that but knowing yourself and being able to look through time and remember what you did and where you were at these checkpoints throughout the way, it's part of evolving consciousness. And see the Chiron last video I linked on the blog and uh, on Facebook and I'll probably put it on Twitter. It is, I believe, the uh, Templar, the key to being a student of the law. That's what's happening. It is a spiritual tuning, and this is a resonating, like two tuning, like a tuning fork or two tuning forks, of uh, master slave. That's terrible terminology. I really don't know why they map it like that, but it's because of what it leads to. Computers were designed after the advanced technology that interacts with your mind was discovered, and um. Computer designed after the first computer was discovered. And um, it's just the pendulum of consciousness will swing back and forth until the person becomes unmovable. And it's my choice if they do. Or natural uh, inclination towards gaining control and thereby true self awareness because they will know how to move you. Okay, it's, they've been doing it for thousands of years, they perfected it. Um, and so, uh, maybe not perfected it, but, uh, yeah. They will move you. And, um, that's happening to the world. The whole world's getting thrown one way, and then it's 
back of this way. We gotta worry about that. Oh, let's, let's enjoy this crazy or the pleasure of that. Oh, I'll get mad at this person and be mad at that and then go back. It's a swing, uh, pendulum. It stops when people stop reacting. People stop moving. And uh, when that happens, it only happens by choice. When does the pendulum stop? Is it an accident? You just run into something? That only creates more motion. It only stops when it absorbs the motion. When a person absorbs what's happening and comes to awareness and controls themselves. And the, the, the tuning fork resonates at its own frequency even with all these other tuning forks bouncing around and getting in space. And it's like, nah, it doesn't work that way anymore. So that's what's happening. Check out those, those links. Thank you.